I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're excited to take a deep dive into the suspenseful world of The Cab Driver Strikes Back, and we're talking with its amazing author, Robert Mungerson. This is the second gripping installment of the Lee Alexander series, and the author takes us on a thrilling journey through the criminal underworld where a former boxer turned cab driver becomes embroiled in a complex web of kidnapping, blackmail, and murder. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Robert, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Great to be on here. This is a uh, wonderful book. It's an installment in the Lee Alexander series. Let's start out first by telling the folks at home what the Lee Alexander series is. Well, yes, this is the um, the second book in the series. The first one's called The Girl with One Arm, and it, it kind of leads you more into the detail of their particular characters, but uh, I don't see any problem with reading the second one if you didn't make the first one. Exactly. They, they can be standalones uh, as well. Yeah, and it's a, it's a it's a story. I think I'm trying to do something a little different than the mainstream, in that uh, these are about people who um, no, they don't have million dollar homes, they don't have uh, hundred thousand dollar cars, mm -hmm. and yet they're still able to do things. And of course, with the access to the web now these days, there's there's many more opportunities. I, I don't mm -hmm. think you could write this story in 1952, yeah. because there, there's there's not the availability on the web to to look up stuff and uh, that you have the opportunity so you can, you know, and, and let's face it, the police are always overwhelmed now, big cities. Absolutely. 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 What inspired you to create this character who transforms from boxer to cabbie and into well, a detective, basically? <laughs> yeah, not, tell, not telling the police what he's doing. That's right. Um, I think uh, these are old characters I had from many years ago when I just did some amateur writing and I just stuck with them. Um, I, I, th I think the thing is, yeah, I, I wanted wanted some characters and I'm, I'm very character focused and, and I like to see, you know, I, have, I actually have a picture in my mind what the characters look like. And uh, I, I think I'm just inspired about trying a little different story. Uh, um, you know, there's, there's different ways of doing this. And, and of course, uh, what I'm trying to do is, 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 you know, maybe I'm a little tired of the detective coming in a police station and getting 16 answers. I don't think that's the real world. Exactly, exactly. It's a little bit different like that in reality, that's for sure. This is such a great story. It's a thrilling thriller. It's a wonderful adventure with such dynamic characters. Lee Alexander is definitely iconic. I could see him up there with Sam Spade and Philip Marlowe and... Uh, all the rest of them. Have you envisioned this perhaps as a movie or a TV series? Um, you, you probably, a movie I could see simply because you do a TV series, well, something like that, the opportunities wouldn't happen that often for a, a guy just getting by. So yeah. you wouldn't have 28 people lining up to talk to him. But uh, you know, a movie here and there, that'd be great, wouldn't it? And who would you cast as Lee Alexander? <laughs> I, if, I, if I'm not available, that is. I got a I got another story for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, it, the, the the casting, you know, for me to write the book, I have to visualize the characters, mm -hmm. and and the characters that I visualize for all these people, I, I I know they're from former movies, TV shows, whatever. I have it clear in my my mind what they look like, and I think it makes it uh, easier for me to write it too. And uh, you know, like uh, the, the characters. You know, most of them are dead, unfortunately. You know, they're, they're way back when. But um, um, the Lee Alexander character, I kind of had like a, when Kenneth Haig played uh, Arabian Nights Burton. And he's he's kind of an angry man, but uh, he, he's a good man, but an angry man. Mm. And then he has this, uh, uh, his, his, meets his girlfriend. And, and she's, you know, it, it works for them because she calms him down a little bit and he gives her confidence. And, uh, when you only have one arm, uh, you know, their confidence level isn't always that great some days. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, uh, and some of the other characters, it's like I like to 
put a little different spin on things. I always look at things upside down anyways. You know, why can't Rondo Hatton, a Rondo Hatton type, be a nice guy on the good good guy side? And uh, his other brother is uh, kind of had vision, kind of a Bud Spencer type. Yeah. So from the Bambino movies. So yeah. I, I try and uh, look at things a little bit differently. Absolutely. And your story really involves a lot of great twists and turns that are completely unexpected. Um, the work with the FBI and a mysterious government agency. Talk to us a little bit about balancing this aspects of the plot while keeping the story very, very accessible and engaging for readers. Well, it, it, everybody involved in this has a different agenda. And, uh, the, you know, the, the NFL is also involved in this. And uh, but they don't care about kidnapping. Why would they care? Let's one of their people. <laughs> and the police, they're worried about, you know, everybody has like almost tunnel vision. Yeah. So everybody has a different agenda. Everybody's going left, right, straight. And so trying to make a story in that and concentrate on what each individual wants to accomplish and and how it will go through. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's I intentionally did it that way because, like again, uh, our our lead character he doesn't uh, he doesn't exactly uh, uh, talk to the police too much. Yeah, absolutely. He's got to figure now, it out himself. <laughs> yeah, this is the second book in the series. How many books are you envisioning? Are you working on the third yet, or is it already out there? No, I've I've uh, got the I got the outline for the third one, but I haven't really started it yet. Uh, Doing a little promotion here and a little promotion there. Yeah. And uh, uh, we'll go from there. Uh, probably, probably I'm going to try and get the third one out um, sometime this year. Sounds great. Sounds great. You know, the book raises questions about morality and human nature. Um, tell us a little bit about what you want readers to think about as they navigate through the layers of your story. I, I think they, I want them to think about subjects. Um, the, the whole, you know, there's a lot of subjects in this. Um, for instance, um, should the, uh, should the uh, CIA or the NSA just have a blank check? They basically, no one can even talk to these people. CIA, I mean, the uh, senators can't, Congress can't even talk to them. Right. But budgets, there's no budget. And I'd like people to think about that. I'd like people to think about um, you know, other subjects that I present, uh, um, you know, I, I, it's, it's the thing we don't talk about that I'm trying to find and give to the readers and, and they can think about it and say, well, this is my book. I, I think he's right or I think he's wrong, but I, I, I'm aware of this situation maybe more now than before. Yeah. What was it like writing this book? Do you enjoy getting lost in the world of Lee Alexander? I I enjoy the writing parts. Some of the other parts uh, are more complicated with my software and experience. But uh, yeah, I, I like it because it, it flows and, and you go, all right, he's at this location. Now what does he do? Right. And and uh, I I hopefully I can, uh, you know, get his thinking process. I try and get everybody's thinking process and what they're tr trying to do. And again, their own agendas. Um, I know some authors, they just strictly go with um, a one narrator, and, and, but I, I'd rather have the reader see what everyone's thinking. Yeah, and Absolutely. Come up with some solutions. And, you know, yeah. some have to talk to bosses, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you a little bit Lee Alexander or is Lee Alexander a little oh, bit? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't I would be that. Uh, it's it's uh, He's, he's from a much different world. He had this, uh, you know, in fact, his girlfriend there, they, they both had some really bad childhoods. I mean, you know, he's, he's, his background is, is really bad. And so he's, he's trying to go day to day and, and trying to um, survive. Hmm. And he's, he's more in survival. Yeah. But he's still a good human being. And he wants people that ask him to do something. Well, they He'll try his best to, to solve it if he can. Yeah, wonderful. Robert Mungerson has written a terrific book. It is called The Cab Driver Strikes Back. It is a thrilling thriller, as I like to say. It's the gripping second installment of the Lee Alexander series. 
The author takes us on a great journey through the criminal underworld where a former boxer turned cab driver becomes mixed up in quite a mess, a mess of kidnapping, black blackmail, and murder. It is a great story, one you will fan yourself with the pages. You'll be turning them so fast because you'll want to find out what happens next. Robert, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.